In Sant Mat, meditation is successfully practiced when we keep the proper meditation posture. Leave behind all our burdens, thoughts, worries, and worldly distractions. And focus all of our undivided attention on going within, by way of the third eye center, so that we may reach that sacred, secret place of the Most High where divine grace is flowing. Rising to the place where grace is flowing is a great way of describing the benefit of Surat Shabad meditation, inner light and sound meditation, as being a kind of inner baptism or letting the waters of divine grace flow over the soul. Radhaswami Dayal, when translated into English, is defined as the merciful, compassionate Lord of the soul. The key when it comes to meditation practice, successfully done, is to use the full power of our attention during meditation. Overcoming distracting thoughts, so we have great meditations, is my focus today. I begin with a reading from Prem Patra Radhaswami by Hazur Maharaj Raiselagram about this very inner struggle. Some persons complain that they do not have the bliss of concentration during bhajan, his term for inner sound meditation, or that they have had no inner experiences. The reason is that at the time of spiritual practice, their mind is either engaged in worldly pursuits or desires, or that they sit in bhajan soon after doing some worldly acts or ruminating about them, so that they are unable to know and appreciate whatever they see or hear internally. It's clear that whenever a person at the time of meditation practice raises in his mind the thoughts and desires of the worldly affairs, the currents of mana or mind and surat or spirit would at that time flow towards the sense organ concerned. As the mind is capable of doing one thing only at a time and the spiritual bliss is only discernible higher up or in the higher current, how can, therefore, the bliss or pleasure of bhajan be had unless the current of the mind is turned upwards and contacts the spirituality of the higher plane? Hazura Maharaj Whoever sits in bhajan or inner sound meditation while thinking of some worldly object or after having finishing some worldly work, his mind and spirit are then saturated with the currents of worldly desires at that time and his attention and tendency would be downwards. So unless he turns his attention in right earnest and sits in bhajan with deep love and yearning, his mind and spirit would not be earnestly and wholly engaged in bhajan, and therefore no bliss would be perceived. In the circumstances, in these circumstances, he is saying, it is proper for him or her to recite thoughtfully some mystic hymns of admonition or warning deep yearning, or love and devotion, prem and bhakti, from the Sarbachan Radhaswami poetry, and here he is speaking of the Sarbachan mystic poetry of his spiritual master, Seth Shivdayal Singh, also known as Swami G. Maharaj, or Sant Radhaswami Sahib, and thus divert his attention. Then, of course, he can derive some bliss and pleasure in spiritual practices 
So here he is talking about if you're having trouble concentrating and you're still distracted by worldly thoughts and worries, read some mystic poetry from the Sarbachan. And of course, others have read from other collections of mystic poetry too, Adi Granth, Tukaram. We have a, a huge canon of scripture, if you will, a vast collection of mystic poetry and prose on this path of the masters. Hazur Maharaj from Prem Patra Radhaswami. One more passage from Hazur Maharaj Rai Salagram from Prem Patra Radhaswami. He says, to sum up, therefore, a true satsangi, an initiate, a disciple of the masters, should, as far as possible, detach himself or herself from worldly affairs every day and should increase love and attachment in the feet of the Supreme Being. The extent to which his mind gets relieved of worldly attachments, his love in the feet of the Supreme Being will increase and the bliss of bhajan, or inner sound meditation, and dhyan, inner light meditation, will also be felt in a greater degree, and he will experience internally greater grace and mercy. As regular listeners of this podcast know, I sometimes factor in comparative religion, comparative mysticism, especially from those other schools of spirituality, those other cousin mystics, Kabbalah, Sufism, Gnosticism, Christian mysticism, Hinduism, Buddhism. The following is about the struggle with the mind and transcending mind to get to that inner grace, that interior state going within the temple of the human body to reach the spirit. It's from the writings of St. Isaac of Nineveh, sometimes known as St. Isaac the Syrian, some newly translated material that most haven't seen from St. Isaac in the past, found in an anthology of Syriac writers from Qatar in the 7th century. Meditation on the perception of you conquers in me the difficulty of the struggle. Sweet converse with your hope leads me captive from consent with the flesh. May this sweetness of the knowledge of you separate me from the way of nature. Make me worthy, my Lord, of true insights concerning your will with regard to us make me worthy of that meditation which in the process transfigures thoughts so as to see within the other world. Also from St. Isaac of Nineveh, create new eyes in me, you who created new eyes for the blind man. Close my exterior ears and open hidden ears, which hear the silence and the sounds of the Spirit, that by your Spirit I might proclaim the word of silence, which arises in the heart, but is not written which moves in the intellect but is not spoken, though spoken by the lips of the Spirit, and is heard by incorporeal hearing. O ocean of compassion, begin to wash 
nature's uncleanness from me and make me fit for your divine sanctuary. This is from the writings of Guru Kabir. Be quiet in your mind, quiet in your senses, and also quiet in your body. Then, when all these are quiet, don't do anything. In that state, truth will reveal itself to you. Let yourself be silently drawn by the strange pull of what you really love. It will not lead you astray, says Rumi. Back to St. Isaac the Syrian. Descend into your heart, and in it you will find the ladder which leads to the kingdom of God. This is from the Discourses of Babuji Maharaj, Volume 3 published in Agra. Within the innermost recesses, all spirituality is one, and it has never undergone any division. Our spirituality, or soul, or surat, is an emanation from the Supreme Being. Within the innermost recesses, it is one with God. By seeking the path Within, one will go beyond the sensory realm and will attain the state of oneness. A passage from Swami Sant Seviji Maharaj. Back to Guru Kabir. When the mind becomes calm, then the truth is revealed. Back to St. Isaac the Syrian also known as St. Isaac of Nineveh. If you love truth, be a lover of silence. Silence like the sunlight will illuminate you in God. This is from another Syriac mystic, and I've shared this before a few times. It's such a wonderful passage. There is a silence of the tongue. There is a silence of the whole body. There is a silence of the soul. There is a silence of the mind. And there is a silence of the spirit. That's from Abraham of Nathpar. Go deeper, past thoughts into silence, past silence into stillness, past stillness into the heart. Let love consume all that is left of you. A passage from Kabir. who has not tasted does not know. Anyone who has not eaten is not satisfied by talking to someone who has. Anyone who hasn't had water doesn't have his thirst quenched by being told about it by someone who has. Anyone who has not experienced does not benefit from another's experience. That's a passage from Gregory Bar Hebraeus, found in a book called The Wisdom of the Perlers, an anthology of Syriac mystics, a book named after the Gnostic Hem of the Pearl. And this is from 
Swami Ram Bahari Lal from a great introduction to the path of the masters, this path of Santmat. One of the early introductions to the path, in fact, a book called The Way Out Is In. If you wish to unite with the beloved, associate your mind with your soul. Unless the mind is obedient to soul, the wounded heart will not find the remedy. This detailed and more comprehensive account of the kingdom of God is true. It is for the exclusive use and guidance of the good and sincere souls who wish to improve their spiritual vision and explore the light of the kingdom of God. It is for those who are not satisfied with the blind captivity of their souls in this perishable cage that these few hints are given to enable them to realize the spiritual path that is hidden from their physical eyes. That's from the introduction to the book, The Way Out Is In, describing this spiritual journey, learning how to see and hear spiritually. On this path of the masters, one may read the mystic poetry of various saints of the ages, and this helps the mind focus on spiritual things. It helps to transition from worldly activity, external worries, concerns, activities, the hustle and the bustle, the agitations of the mind, to settle down and to focus. And from there, of course, that's a good time to start meditating after reading a paragraph or two from one of the mystic poets, one of the saints. Could be any, anyone, you know, Kabir, Guru Nanak, the Sarbachan Radhaswami poetry. My whole e-library is dedicated to sharing many of these writings with the world. The Sant Mat Radhaswami e-library. Just scroll down below if you're listening to this podcast by way of YouTube and click on the link. You'll find Kabir sections, Adi Granth sections, Radhaswami sections, Kripal Singh sections. Lots there to explore. A whole lifetime's worth of reading for free online. The Sant Mat Radhaswami e-library. Or you can send me an email and ask for a link to it. James at spiritualawakeningradio.com is my email address. James at spiritualawakeningradio.com Ask for the link to the Sant Mat e-library. I'll be happy to share that with you. So, of course, reading from the mystic poetry of the Masters is a good way to transition from the outer world to meditation time. And then, of course, there are spiritual exercises one learns at the time of initiation. Simran, the repetition of sacred names to further take you within, focusing on the form, visualizing the form of one's spiritual master, develops receptivity to see inner light. And then the next stage is actually seeing inner light by way of the third eye center. And then, of course, bhajan, or hearing the inner sound during meditation, known as Surat Shabd Yoga. The source of the divine ocean of God opens a portal to the light. Awaken that resplendent light within you. Repeat the name of God and secure him, says St. Tulsi Sahib of Hathras. And our final reading today comes once again from Kabir. If you want the truth, I'll tell you the truth. Listen to the secret sound, the real sound which is inside you.